Lighters and Seven Bodies Part 4 Along the path it is very important for the seekers to know these and also know their biorhythm charts. Sufis in the past have not initiated the seekers into the fold until the seeker had understood the biorhythm charts. It is very well known that females have their menstrual period but men do have also. It may not be apparent physically in case of men, but it is related to the phase of the moon. The psychological effects remain there. There are three cycles. The physical cycle, which is of 28 to 33 days. The mental or emotional cycle, which is of 33 days. And intellectual cycle, which is of 35 days. It all relates to the phase of the moon. Someday you get up in the morning, nothing has happened. Intellectually you feel that the thoughts, the ideas are not coming in. For no reason you are emotionally disturbed. For no reason there is a physical lack of energy. All this is the outcome of the biorhythm chart. What the seeker is supposed to do? Look at the phase of the moon starting from the new moon or full moon and on a day-to-day -day basis look at the physical, emotional and intellectual level. And when you have the clear understanding that then you can go beyond this. You know according to the biorhythm chart your intellectual progress will be less on this day. You can change that meditatively and that can make a lot of difference. This is how Sufis had mentioned and taught their seekers when they enter the fold to understand the biorhythm charts and their, their life force and seven bodies before they can be initiated. When you reach the seventh plane or the body, things become even more difficult. Buddha called the seventh body as Nirvani Kaya or the body. Kaya is Hindi word for body. This is also called the state of enlightenment. The seventh body is the manifestation of the absolute, the true, the light. This is the last state. There is no more creation or dissolution. Only being and non-being is. In the seventh body, there is creation of someone else. Both being and non-being are of you. Creation is of someone else, but being and non-being are of you. In this body, being and non-being are two breaths. One is not identified with either of the two. Now, how does this happen? You have an individuality, and that individuality becomes the cause of your ego, and many things like that. When you realize that your individuality has dissolved into the cosmos or drop has merged into the ocean, before the drop merges in the ocean, you have the turbulence of the drop, you have all the qualities of the drop, you are micro. You are simply a drop. Thereafter, when the drop merges in the ocean, you become ocean. You attain to oceanic texture, you attain to oceanic status, then although you exist as drop, but yet still you are oceanic. So this is the essence of being and non-being. You are a drop and yet still you are not a drop. You are being yet still you are not being, non-being. In this body, being and non-being are two great. One is not identified with either of the two. It is for those who have reached the seventh body and given a new religion. And in the end, only two words remain, being and non-being. No more the language. Then, when you are following the side of the being, then, which is incoming breath, a different kind of language is used. Buddha used the language of non-being, the outgoing breath. To Buddha, nothing else is reality. He used the negative language, neti, neti, not this, not that. 
I can only see that which is, is not this, is not that. But what it is cannot be said. When you cut off all that which is not, then what remains is that which is. This is the way of negation. There is the other way, is the way of assertion. Shankar, on the other hand, used the positive words. He used the incoming breath, the being. These are the only choices as far as the language is concerned. Being and non-being. Yet still there is another choice and that is the third one. Accordingly, nothing can be said about reality. At the most we can say absolute being or absolute non-being. Only this much can be said. Then what is the possibility? Transcendence is possible. So one has to choose between being and non-being. Either the negative or the positive language. These are the approaches of Buddha or the approach of Shankar. Through these seven bodies, life energy manifests into multidimensional realms. Wherever life is found, both the incoming and outgoing processes remain. Life exists because of these polarity. Thus it can be said that prana or life force is energy. The cosmic energy and our physical body gives the first acquaintance. Life first manifests as breath at physical plane, then it goes on manifesting differently at other planes. The other forms of this manifestation of life are influences, magnetism, thoughts, life, creation and being. Thus this goes on. And when you are aware of this, you transcend to reach the third possibility. As you reach to this third possibility, you transcend that body and enter the next. For instance, in the physical body, life force manifests as incoming and outgoing breath, flow of air coming in and going out. When you transcend this, then you can enter the second body where influences are there. And when you go beyond the two influences, two magnetic forces, two thoughts incoming and outgoing, life incoming and outgoing, incoming life as birth and outgoing life as death, creation and dissolution, being and non-being, then you transcend that particular body. And when you have transcended all the seven bodies, then you attain to enlightenment. This is an explanation of what happens to an enlightened one. It is not that you can attain to enlightenment through transcending these bodies. It happens naturally and spontaneously in the process of enlightenment. As the process continues and you go on transcending these bodies one after the other, you reach the seventh body. Beyond the seventh is enlightenment, the bodilessness. You exist in the body, but you are not the body. This is why Hindus call the King Janak, who is the father of Sita, the consort of Ram, in the epic Ramayana, as Vide, one who existed in the body, yet his consciousness was not of the body. You exist in the body and your consciousness is of the body. Janak exists in the body but the body does not exist within him and thus he has transcended beyond the duality and the sense of functioning. Then you are pure. No more plagued by polarities or no more plagued by polarities or dualities. This is non duality or what Hindus call as Advait. Cannot, I cannot say whether two exist or not, but then what actually happens? Certainly I cannot say that one exists or not, but certainly two does not exist. When you negate that two does not exist, then what remains 
is the ultimate oneness. But your oneness is the absence of the other. When other is not, you are alone. But this aloneness is the ultimate oneness where you transcend all dualities. Beyond the seventh body, there is no more duality, only pure oneness. This is bodiless existence. This is bodiless existence.